this video, I'll show you how to create binomial distribution probabilities in Excel with the binome dist function. The binome dist function creates a binomial distribution from a set of data entered into a worksheet. You use this function to calculate probabilities for problems with a fixed number of trials, two outcomes, success or failure, independent trials, and a constant probability of success. Let's say you're playing a game of marbles where you have to guess whether your opponent has odd or even marbles, like the one in Squid Game. As you can't see your opponent's hand, and you're not a mind reader, you have a 50% chance, that's 0.5 as a decimal, of guessing right for each round. You play 12 rounds. We want to know what is the probability of getting all 12 guesses right, 6 of the guesses right, or any number from 0 to 12 guesses correct. Here's how you would set up the worksheet for this experiment. The first column has x, that's the number of correct guesses. This second column, I'm going to calculate the probabilities for guessing a certain number of times. 0.5 is our 50% probability of a success, that's a correct guess, and I've put the total number of rounds here, which is 12. Click on cell B2. Type equals B-I-N-O. You'll notice two functions here that are very similar. I'm using Excel 365 for this example, but the binome.dist function works in all older versions back to Excel 2010. If you're using Excel 2007 and earlier, use the binome dist function. Binome dist is compatible with all versions, although the original binome dist function did suffer from inaccurate calculations. Microsoft updated the function in 2010 to offer better accuracy. So if you can, you'll want to use the binome.dist function. Double click the binome.dist function. For number, I want to tell Excel how many guesses. For this first row, I'm guessing zero, and that's located in cell A2. I'm going to type A2 and a comma. Next, we have number of trials. I place the total number of trials in D1. I'm actually going to use that cell all the way down the column to make all of the different calculations, and I want Excel to use that cell repeatedly. So instead of typing D1, I'm going to type D$1. And in fact, instead of typing that out, I'm going to click the cell, D1. Excel has entered the information for me. Now all I have to do is insert the dollar sign. And a comma. For probability, I'm going to do the same thing. My probability is in cell C1. But I want Excel to freeze that and use it down the column. So I'm going to type C dollar sign 1. Type a comma. I don't want cumulative here, so I'm going to type false for that. In my next example, I'll show you what happens when you type true. But for now, we'll leave it at false. Close parentheses. Press enter. Excel has performed the first calculation. We want to move the formula down the column. Click the little blue box at the bottom right of the cell and drag that down to the end of the column of data. We can look at the results and we expect it to get half right if it's a true or false or success or failure with a 50% probability. But it's sometimes easier to see if you create a scatter plot with the data. So let's go ahead and do that. Highlight the two columns, 
Click in the top left and drag the cursor to the bottom right. Click the Insert tab. Choose Scatter in the Charts section. I'm going to choose a scatter with markers and lines. Here's our expected value. We expect it to get 6 out of 12 correct. And the probability of that happening is about 0.2. We can also see from the graph that there is a very slim chance of getting, say, 10 correct. The probability there is 0 0.016. That's about 1.6%. And that's also true of getting two correct, a very small chance. You're much more likely to get a result in the centre here from between about four to eight guesses. Now let's see what happens when we change the formula from false to true. I'm going to click on cell B2, brings up our formula, and change that false to true and drag that formula all the way down to the bottom of the column. And here is the same information, but now we have cumulative probabilities. Here's our expected value in the middle. And as we would expect with cumulative probabilities, they range from 0 to 1. In other words, you have a 100% chance of guessing between 0 and 12 correct, which shouldn't come as a surprise in a game of odds and evens on marbles. I hope you found the video helpful. Please take a moment to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.